Hi everyone, welcome to another video of NS Pharma. In today's video, we are going to see GPAT 2020 question paper. In this video, we I will discuss the question paper and their answers with the explanation. So we know that previous year exam will be very helpful for those who is going to attend the coming GPAT examination. In GPAT question paper there will be 125 questions. Each right answer carries positive 4 mark. For the wrong answer they will deduct 1 mark. The total time given will be 3 hours and this is a computer based exam. So these are the general things regarding the GPAT. So we can move to the first question of the video. First question, Schick test toxin is a sterile filtrate from a culture of. Schick test toxin is a sterile filtrate from a culture of. Options are Corinibacterium diphtheria, Actinobacillus malle, Mycobacterium diphtheria, Rickettsia provaseki. The correct answer for this question is Corinibacterium diphtheria. Schick test toxin is uh, obtained from Corinibacterium diphtheria. So what is Schick test? Schick test is, is a test used to detect the susceptibility of a person to the diphtheria. It is used for the susceptibility. For finding out the susceptibility to diphtheria. That is the Schick test. So Schick test, how it is done? In Schick test, the test is a small amount of diphtheria toxin. A small amount of diphtheria toxin is injected into the one hand and to another hand inactivated toxin is injected. That means in one hand diphtheria toxin is injected and in another hand inactivated toxin is injected as a control and it, it, afterwards it is looking for the observations like redness around the injected area and also swelling. If there is a redness and swelling near the injected area then this uh, the person is saying it is positive test that is positive chick test. So if there is no uh, no redness or no uh, swelling then that is negative test. So what is positive test means? Positive test means that if there is a redness or swelling that means the person don't have antibody against the toxin that is the person is susceptible to susceptible to diphtheria. Negative test means there is no redness or no swelling. That is the person has already antibody against the toxin. So the person is not susceptible. He is immune. He is immune. Susceptible. Not susceptible. Negative test is not susceptible. That is negative test is there is no redness or swelling. So these are the case. The toxin is injected to one hand and another hand control uh, that is inactive toxin is injected. Here it is toxin that is diphtheria toxin is injected. So positive test there is a redness and a swelling that means the person is susceptible to diphtheria. And uh, in case of negative test there is no swelling no redness. So the, the person is immune or the, he is not susceptible to diphtheria. Mm, diphtheria diphtheria. Now the, we are moving to the next question, question number 2. As per the European Pharmacopoeia, as per the European Pharmacopoeia Technical Guide, substance stored at 25 degrees Celsius for 24 hours at 80 degree RH, that is relative humidity, called very hygroscopic when there is an increase in weight of According to European Pharmacopoeia, very hygroscopic means options are greater than or equal to 
0.2 percentage weight per weight and less than 15 percentage weight per weight increase in weight. Second option greater than or equal to 0.2 percentage weight per weight and less than 2 percentage weight per weight increase in weight. Third option greater than or equal to 15 percentage weight per weight and the fourth option greater, or, greater than or equal to 0.2 percentage weight per weight and less than 20 percentage weight per weight. So the correct answer for this question is option C 15 percentage weight per weight increase or greater than 15 percentage then that is called very hygroscopic. According to the uh, European pharmacopoeia the substances uh, are classified into I will write it down here non hygroscopic non hygroscopic if the, you don't know this thing you have to write it down in the note and you have to study very well uh, because uh, sometimes the, in this question paper it is asked for very hygroscopic sometimes the uh, question will come uh, regarding the uh, another class so non hygroscopic another is slightly hygroscopic slightly hygroscopic then the third is moderately hygroscopic moderately hygroscopic and the last one is in the question that is very hygroscopic very hygroscopic these are the four classification of the substance according to the European pharmacopoeia in the case of increasing weight when it is kept in 25 degrees Celsius kept at 25 degrees Celsius for 24 hours at 80 degree RH 18 percentage RH so non hygroscopic means here in the question that is a very hygroscopic means greater than or equal to 15 percentage 15 percentage weight per weight okay so non hygroscopic mean 0 to 0.12 percentage weight per weight 0 to 0.12 slightly means 0.2 to 2 moderate means 2 to 15 hopefully you understood this thing that is non hygroscopic means point, uh, 0 to 0.12 slightly means 0.2 to 2 percentage moderately hygroscopic means 2 to 15 percentage and the last one very hygroscopic greater than or equal to 15 percentage that was the question now we are moving to the third question of the video of the gpad 2020 third question is lake of dice lake of dice available commercially contains maximum up to dash percentage of pure dye lakes of dye available commercially contain maximum up to dash percentage of pure dye options are 10 percentage 15 percentage 50 percentage 25 percentage the correct answer is 15 percentage lake is actually available in the low dye concentration generally it is contain 15 to 17 percentage pure dye 15 to 17 percentage of pure dye like dye is a low dye concentrated dye we are moving to the question number four type 2 glass containers type 2 glass containers are type 2 glass containers are options are most inert glasses and shows high hydrolytic resistance option 2 suitable for alkaline solutions option 3 suitable for new non aqueous preparation and the last option suitable for most acidic and neutral aqueous preparation the question is based on the type 2 glass containers we know that glass containers are classified into four types type 1 type 2 type 3 and type 4 we will discuss in detail in the last section in this question paper itself uh, another question is also came regarding this uh, same glass container so we will uh, uh, study in detail there here we have to mention we had noted on that type 2 glass containers are uh, suitable for storing neutral aqueous solution they are suitable for neutral aqueous preparation and also acidic preparations whether they are parenteral or non parenteral even if it is parenteral or non parenteral uh, the acidic as well as neutral aqueous solution preparations can be stored under in the type 2 glass containers and one more thing one more thing type 2 glass containers uh, they have generally has lower melting point than melting point in case of melting point type 2 have lower melting point than type 1 <coughs> type 2 glass containers have less low low melting point than type 1 type 1 has got a higher melting point 
Um, this is another point regarding this one. Uh, in detail, we will see in the last of the uh, question paper, there's another question. We will discuss in that type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4, all the things. So we are moving to the next question, question number 5. Question number 5. Dimethyl sulfoxide. So dimethyl sulfoxide acts as penetration enhancer. Penetration enhancer. Uh, for topical formulations by so here the question is what is the mechanism of dimethyl sulfoxide dimethyl sulfoxide is an, a penetration enhancer that is used in the topical preparation so that the medicine will be uh, penetrated uh, inside uh, it will enhance the penetration power dimethyl sulfoxide so what is the mechanism for the pay this uh, action the options are denaturing protein increasing trans epidermal loss option 3 altering solvent nature of membrane option for increasing solubility the correct answer for this question is uh, option a denaturing protein dimethyl sulfoxide is acting as denaturing act by denaturing protein now we are moving to the question number six In capsule making, in capsule making, the bloom strength, the bloom strength of gelatin is proportional to molecular weight of the gelatin and is a measure of the. So the question is, what is bloom strength? It is proportional to molecular weight. It is given molecular weight of the gelatin used. It is given in the questions. So question. So what is what is the bloom strength? What is it is a measure of the options are adhesive strength of gelatin with the dipping pins. Option two, adhesive sorry cohesive strength of the solvent molecule. Option three, adhesive uh, strength of gelatin with other polymer. Option four, cohesive strength of the cross-linking that occurs between gelatin molecule so what is bloom strength bloom strength is the measure of cohesive strength of cross-linking cohesive strength of the cross-linking occurs between gelatin molecule that is the correct answer that is the correct answer option 4 is the correct answer and the unit of bloom strength is grams unit of bloom strength unit of bloom strength is gram so the normal value is in between 150 to 250 gram that is the bloom strength 150 to 250 gram is the general normal value normal value unit actually it's a gram unit of bloom strength is gram now we are moving to the question number seven question number seven an excipient ludicrous an excipient ludipress used for liquid dosage form used for liquid dosage form is a com co-processed excipient of is a co-processed excipient of options are so what is the ludipress that is they are asking uh, options are lactose monohydrate plus colidone 30 option 2 dextrose monohydrate plus colidone 30 option 3 lactose monohydrate plus colidone 30 plus colidone cl option 4 dextrose monohydrate plus colidone 30 and colidone cl so ludipress what is ludipress ludipress is a co-processed -co product consists of lactose monohydrate plus polyvinyl pyrolidone polyvinyl pyrolidone that is also known as colidone 30 plus colidone cl the correct answer is option 3 that is lactose monohydrate then colid colidone 30 that is polyvinyl pyrolidone pvp then colidone cl colidone cl is also known as cross povidone it is also known as cross povidone okay cross povidone cross povidone so Lactose monohydrate is there, colidone 30 is there, colidone CL is there. That is the ludipress. Ludipress is an excipient which has got three main functions of a filler, binder and disintegrant. This is the main three function of ludipress. It is an excipient which is acting, which acts three functional, functionalities like filler, binder and disintegrant. So here PVP, 
cross povidone and lacto monohydroid these are the three component of ludipras so what is uh, here it is lactose monohydrate is 93.4 percentage is there in case of uh, colidon 30 that is 3.2 percentage this is colidon 3 cl 3.4 percentage this is the composition 93.4 percentage of lactose monohydrate 3.2 percentage of pvp or colidon 30 plus 3.4 percentage of colidon cl or cross povidon which is the ludipras ludipras is acting as an excipient which has got three main functionalities like filler then binder and disintegrant now we are moving to the next question question number eight violin gut violin gut is obtained from the intestine of violin gut that is the uh, string which is used inside the violin that is a uh, instrument musical instrument In that violin gut is obtained from the intestine of options are horse sheep cat then camel correct answer is sheep sheep so one thing you know cat gut cat gut you know this is uh, it's uh, it's used as a suture for suturing and uh, surgical lig uh, ligatures they are using as surgical ligatures and sutures it's also obtained from the sheep gut sheep intestine another one is uh, strings of violin that is violin gut then uh, uh, tennis racket uh, tennis racket tennis rackets then archery balls all these things are made from the intestine of sheep cat gut tennis ar uh, tennis racket archery balls then violin gut all are uh, prepared obtained from the intestine of sheep these are the uh, that uh, 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 the point regarding this questions cat gut this question cat gut tennis racket then archery balls all are prepared from the uh, intestine of sheep we are moving to the ninth question of the video. Ninth question is pyrogens present in containers. Pyrogens present in the containers can be destroyed by heating the containers at the pyrogen destruction. Is uh, talking about the pyrogen destruction. How it is possible? Option one. 210 degrees celsius for 1 hour 210 degrees celsius for 4 hour 121 degrees celsius for 30 minutes 121 degrees celsius for 15 minutes so the correct answer for this question is 210 degrees celsius uh, 210 degrees celsius for 4 hour 4 hour there are two methods for the pyrogen destruction one is 210 degrees celsius for 4 hour otherwise you can use 650 degrees celsius 650 degrees celsius for one minute one minute okay 650 degrees degree celsius for one minute otherwise 210 degrees celsius for four hours in some test book it's also saying 180 degrees celsius for four hour also 180 degrees celsius for four hour also we are moving to the next question 10th question uh, the last question of the video this video relative seedness of sucrose to saccharin relative hope you can under, uh, you can see the question very well uh, relative sweetness of sucrose to saccharin options are 1 is to 200 option b uh, 1 is to 500 1 is to 400 1 is to 100 saccharin is actually saccharin is an is about 500 times sweeter than sucrose 500 times sweeter than sucrose so the here, here the correct answer is 1 is to 500 is the correct answer so thank you guys for watching this video hopefully you understood the, all the question if you have any doubt regarding these questions you can send the I mean, you can ask through the comment section and if you like this video please make a subscription and also uh, press the bell button so that whenever I upload uh, new videos that is in the second part and coming videos I will try to cover maximum uh, of the GPAD previous year exams uh, uh, 